So if you ever wanted to realise the, the damage of finishing second in the Champions League group when you could have won it, look at Liverpool's Champions League round of 16 tie against Real Madrid. Liverpool, had they finished top of the group, would have avoided such a big tie, but they've got probably the worst possible tie they could have imagined. It's a game against the European champions, a team that beat them in the Champions League final in Paris last season, and a team that's won five of the last six games against Liverpool. So not many teams have, a, have such a hold over Liverpool, but Real Madrid do. And, you know, Real will go to this tie. They could be top of the Spanish league by then. They're the reigning European champions. And they will expect to be a Liverpool side that's really struggled this season for consistency. So when this game comes around in February at Anfield, the first leg, it's going to be a massive test of Jurgen Klopp's team and whether they've made any progress from where they are right now. We know they can beat any team in the world on the day. You know, they beat Man City recently. You know, Mo Salah is still a great forward. You've got Darwin Nunes finding his feet finally. Roberto Firmino still performing for Liverpool. But as we know, their midfield is an issue. The defence has been an issue at times this season. We saw that Real Madrid targeted Trent Alexander-Arnold in the Champions League final to great effect. So... There are a lot of weaknesses in Liverpool's side and I think Real Madrid can exploit them. So for me, it's the worst possible tie for Liverpool. And I think everyone was talking at, at Liverpool about winning the Champions League in Istanbul again after that remarkable final in 2005, the miracle of Istanbul. But they've got to beat Real Madrid and that is going to be a very, very tough ask, especially the way Liverpool are playing right now. Beyond that, Man City, obviously favourites to win it alongside Real and Bayern Munich. City have got a great draw. RB Leipzig, a team that... You know, he's got potential to be, to provide an upset. They beat Real Madrid in the group stage, but over two legs, you can't really see City slipping up against Leipzig. I saw Leipzig against Shakhtar Donetsk in Warsaw last week, and they're an impressive side. You know, Christopher Nkunku, good player, could be on his way to Chelsea next summer. Same way with Yoshko Radio at the back. They're, they're a good team. Marco Rose has got, has got Leipzig playing well. They're well organised, and they could have Timo Werner back when this game comes around. He, he damaged ankle ligaments against Shakhtar, means he'll miss the World Cup. But even if Shakhtar, even if Leipzig are at full strength, to beat City over two games with the likes of Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne at top four, it's so hard to see. So you've got to pick Man City to win this tie and go through the quarterfinals as they continue to look for their first ever Champions League win. At some point they'll get it, and it could be this season because they've got a good tie to get through at the quarterfinals. Now beyond that, you've got Tottenham, a bit AC Milan, a game between two sides that have been inconsistent in the Champions League this season, but both capable of pulling off a result, you know, when needed. I think this could boil down to a game between the strikers on both sides. We know that, you know, Tottenham with Harry Kane, Son Hyung Min, great goal threat, relied on these two a lot and, you know, Kane will always score goals for Tottenham. On the flip side, you know, we'll have Olivier Giroud and not many Tottenham fans will want to be reminded of Olivier Giroud, a guy that's tormented them with Chelsea, with Arsenal and a player that even in his mid-30s continues to deliver for Milan on the big stage. He's a player that has a lot of critics but Giroud always seems to deliver. So, for me, it's about which striker performs best over the two legs. I think Milan's extra experience in the Champions League might count. You know, as a, as a club, they know what it takes. I know they've not been in the, in the competition, this group of players, for quite a while, but it's not just about the players, it's about the club, it's the fans, it's the actual, the sense of belonging. I think Milan are a club that, obviously, second on to Real Madrid in terms of Champions League, whereas they are a club that belong in the Champions League. I think Tottenham, at times, still like, feel like they're feeling the way around the competition and that, not that they don't deserve to be there, but they're just looking around for how do we do this, how do we get to the next step. Antonio Conte's record in the Champions League isn't fantastic, so it's a well-poised time, I think, we get to the stage in February, March, when which team is in best form, which coach is in best form, is it Conte, is it Stefano Pioli? So this is a really finely balanced time. I think, as it, as it stands right now, I'd just favour AC Milan to go through, just because they have a, a bit more experience within the club and within the squad, people like Giroud, Ibrahimovic as well. So for me, tough, tough one to call. Same applies to Chelsea versus Borussia Dortmund. You know, Chelsea haven't been great this season. Change of manager, Thomas Tuchel's gone, Graham Potter's come in. But a lot of the players aren't performing. Raheem Sterling has been, has been very, very poor for Chelsea since he signed for Man City. He's not delivered, he's not lived up to the hype, lived up to the price tag. But you've got a lot of experience in that Chelsea team. Thiago Silva, Angolo Kante, if he's fit. Sterling himself, Aspilicueta. So they know what it's about. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, we're going back to Borussia Dortmund. Christian Pulisic, another player that knows Dortmund well. So... There's a lot of connections this, in this time. It's a game that Chelsea will expect to win. But Borussia Dortmund as well. They've got lots of experience. Mats Hummels, Marco Royce, Nicolas Soule. They've got Guillaume Reyna. So there's, an, there's a US element there with Reyna versus Pulisic. It is a tough game to call. And I think that Chelsea's greater experience in the latter stages of the Champions League will get them through. But, you know, Dortmund showed in the group stage against Man City that they can, they can frustrate a strong Premier League opponent. So it's a tough one to call this. And I think that, again, Let's get to February, March and see which team's in the best position. But I do think that Chelsea should edge this one out. So for me, looking at it from this point that, you know, we're talking about November before the World Cup, a lot of things can happen. Players can get injured, players can move. I think that Liverpool get knocked out, Man City go through, Tottenham get knocked out right now and Chelsea go through. But let's see what happens when the round of 16 comes around. 
thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.